We have already been introduced to the various different types of energy. We have looked at the idea that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only changed from one form to another. If you haven't done so already from last week's task, what I would like you to do is write down different types of energy and a sentence describing each one. You can use the following slides or you can use your ebook, chapter 16, page 275, to do so. Well, what we know is energy could be loosely two words and it's measured in joules. Joules is given as capital J and this comes from a man named James Prescott Joule. Kinetic energy is the energy that moving objects have. As you can see here, waves consistently have kinetic energy. That's where we get hydroelectric power from. Whereas potential energy is energy that can be stored. For example, potential energy can be found in batteries or in elastic. So when you pull back an elastic band, the potential energy is there. Sound energy is made up by vibration. So the air vibrating around you allows the sound to be carried and channeled into your ears. If you look at a tuning fork, um, heat energy is fantastic. Um, heat is the transfer of energy and it can be done in three different ways via radiation, conduction and convection. Now, heat energy can cause movement and that's how you see a hot air balloon rising up into the air using heat energy. Chemical energy is not only just in food, you find it in many fuels such as petrol, coal and gas. When these substances are burned, the energy is released. So when your body undergoes respiration, like remember respiration is the release of energy from food, that's how we feel our bodies and how we get energy for our bodies. Whereas electrical energy is the presence and flow of an electrical charge, um, it's actually the flow of electrons in a substance. So we would need what we would call a conductor to allow this to happen. And electrical energy can also cause movement in a substance. Magnetic energy can cause different types of metals to either attract or repel each other. Large, powerful electromagnets are used in scrap yards, so they would lift cars, large pieces of metal, etc. Now, you also know that the Earth's core contains um, various different metals which are magnetic. So the Earth has a magnetic field. Solar energy is the way the Earth obtains most of its energy. For example, it comes from the sun's rays. Plants take energy from the sun to grow. This method is called photosynthesis. Whilst solar panels can store the sun's energy and convert it not only to heat energy, but electrical energy. So this will be our primary source of energy on the earth. It's great when changes occur in the structure of the nucleus or the nuclei of an atom. Now there's two methods that we do this, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Both of these have the potential to release extremely large amounts of energy and therefore it is known to be quite dangerous, especially if you get a runaway nuclear reaction. What we know is go to your ebook to page 274 and read all about the stored energy. What you need to do then is give an example of stored energy for each of the following types of energy. You do not have to use the example given in your book. It would be a great idea for you to look and research your own. So look at heat, chemical, kinetic, magnetic and potential energy. When you have finished this, also do question two on page 281. Ensure that your answers are written in your copy and send them via Edmoda to me. The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only changed from one form to another. So if we look at the example on the left hand side of the light bulb, electrical energy is converted into light, which is needed, 
also known to be use of energy, and heat energy. The heat energy is dissipated. That means it is given out into the environment. This is not useful energy, as it is not what we require from the light bulb. We only require the light. Can you think of any other energy conversions that one of the forms of energy will be given out and not be used or not be needed? So here are some examples of energy transfers. As you can see, the light bulb example is given again. Electrical energy is converted into light energy, which is very useful, and heat energy, which is wasted. If you look at the hair dryer, electrical energy is converted into heat energy, which is very useful, because obviously we want to be able to dry our hair, and sound and kinetic, which are both wasted. When you are ready, pause the video and do the energy transfers for both the television and your mobile phone. And if there is any other item you use regularly around your house, please add that in. Write the answers into your copy and make sure you take a photograph of them. There is a fantastic method that we can use to show energy transfers. A Sankey diagram shows all the energy transfers taking place in one process. For example, as you can see here, electrical energy, 100 joules, is provided. This is converted into both heat energy, which is 90 joules, and light energy, which is 10 joules. If this was a light bulb, it would not be very efficient. Why? The light energy is only 10 joules, whereas the heat is 90. So only 10 out of 100 joules are, be used, are being used for what we want, whereas 90 joules in this case would be wasted. So in this diagram, we can see again is electrical energy, 100 joules, being converted into both light and heat energy. If we take the light bulb example again, we can see that this light bulb would be more efficient than the last. Why? Because 75 out of 100 joules are being used for light, whilst only 25 joules are wasted an example question. The first thing I'd like you to do is draw this diagram into your copybook. Note down that 20,000 joules of energy are in gas. 12,000 joules of energy goes to heating your room, whilst 8,000 joules are released as sound energy. This diagram shows us our heating in the home, so A, how much energy is being used in the way we would want it? B. How much energy is wasted? When you have done both of those, I would like you to do C. Draw your own diagram for a hairdryer that uses 200 joules in electrical energy. So 200 joules going in. 150 joules is used as heat and 50 joules is used as sound. I would like you to note on that which is useful and which is wasted. I would also like you to be aware that there needs to be a size difference in the arrows. If you can see the sound energy above, the arrow comes off at an angle. This angle shows us that it is wasted energy or non-useful energy. Also, please be aware that in some cases, you would have to draw a much thicker arrow for the useful energy. For example, 150 joules is greater than 50 by three times the amount. So I would draw a three times wider arrow for the useful energy as opposed to the wasted energy. When we talk about something called efficiency, efficiency is how good the devices are taking energy and converting it into the type that we want. We can do a nice little calculation to figure out how efficient an item is. So the equation is as follows. Percentage efficiency is equal to useful energy transfer divided by the total energy. 
times a hundred of our wood. Now, let us take the light bulb again as an example. We had a hundred tips that was used. Ten converted to light, which was the useful energy, and ninety converted to heat, wasted or dissipated energy. Note, ten equals our useful energy transfer, divided by a hundred, our total energy. Multiply that by 100 over 1 and you get 10%. So the efficiency of this light bulb is 10%. How about this question? 100 joules of electricity entered the light bulb. 75 converted to light energy, which is useful. 25 joules converted to heat energy, which is wasted. So it's useful over total amount times 100 over 1. So 75 over 100 times 100 over 1 equals 75%. Now, go back to slide 19 and do the efficiency calculation for that diagram into your copy, making sure that you write the equation first, then fill in the numbers, then do the calculation. When you are finished that, go to page 277, do the yellow box and write the answers into your copy. Finally, go to page 281 and do question 4. You do not need to draw the diagram into your copy. Use arrows to show energy starts as one form and changes to another. Take a photograph of your work and upload it via the assign button in Edmodo. Now, if we look at energy transfers in the home, power is the rate at which energy is transferred from one form to another. It's measuring watts. Power is equal to energy in joules divided by time. For example, if you had 100 joules divided by 10 seconds, you would have 10 watts. So, what is the power rating for a machine that uses 18,000 joules of energy per hour. Now most people need to be aware that there are 60 minutes in an hour. You need to convert those minutes into seconds. So 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. So you're going to need to multiply 60 by 60 to get your time in seconds and then have 18,000 divided by your answer. When you finish that, make a list of all the appliances that you think in your home use the most energy. You need to be aware of how electricity bills are calculated. So to charge for electricity, the kilowatt hour is used. For example, we have to calculate how many electrical units are used if a 3,000 watt electrical heater is on for two hours, the first thing we need to do is convert from watts to kilowatts. So we divide 3,000 by 1,000 to get three. We then multiply by two and we get six kilowatt hours. Now the next section, if electricity costs 0.14 of a cent per unit, how much will it cost to run this heat? Well, what we do is we take our 6 kilowatt hours and we multiply by 0 0.14 and the answer is 0 0.84 cents. Write that down and calculate it yourself. So the next thing I'd like you to do is go through the following three questions and work them out in your copy. Do each of those individually and label them. You then can take a photograph and upload them to the Edinburgh group. It is really important to look into reducing energy loss in the home. So there's various ways you can do this. The most simple way is to turn off and unplug appliances when they're not being used. Use energy efficient appliances such as CFL light bulbs and maybe insulate your house. You could also use a timer for the heating to come on or the water to be heated. 
it is also very important not to leave mobile phones plugged in overnight for fear that they may overheat and start fire. You have already looked at you guys doing an experiment to show an energy conversion. But what I'd like you to do now is build and design an energy conversion device. This can be as simple as a basic catapult. 